Hello and welcome back. I'm wearing red. You know what that means. Another amazing ladybug video tutorial. This is the second uh, video tutorial where we take a deep dive into ladybug and the ladybug tools together, but from the perspective of ladybug. In this video, we will look into how we can modify our weather data. It fits our actual, actual location. You see, the problem is that most of the weather data we find online are based at airports. Airports need weather data. That's why they are a reliable source of weather data. Now, your project might be 100 kilometers off, 200 kilometers off the airport. They might be in a different altitude. They might have different sun, sunset and sunrise time. And that means the shadows are different or start earlier and later and so on. The wind speed might be different. If your project is on the countryside, then um, the surrounding environment might change the temperature drastically and so on. That's why we'll, we'll look into that today based on a real project. Yes, you heard right. I'm working on a, on a charity project. I was invited to help uh, on that as a landscape architect. I will not disclose much. It's in Rwanda. It's on the countryside somewhere. And it's a good opportunity for me to show what we, how we could start um, analyze the space from far away. I'm in London, so it's quite a big difference. And But I can start to look into um, the climate, the altitude, and so on. And that's what we're going to look at today. Before we jump in, a member shout out. We have a new member, Rupoki. I hope I pronounce it correctly. I don't know much about Rupoki. Rupoki 1541, no videos, but it doesn't matter. Oh, I haven't checked if there are playlists. No playlists, nothing. I don't know any about, anything about you. It doesn't matter. You chose to support me and that I'm very thankful for. And I hope I can help. Just drop me a line if you need anything and... I will see what I can do. Having said that, of course, I want to thank everybody who joined recently and my my longtime members who decided to support me amazingly. Raphael F. Giretta, seven months. He's supporting me seven months. I'm really grateful. Uh, then we have Rushing Young, also seven months. Johnny Stein, five months. Combo 45, nine months. Amazing. Nine months already. It's uh, incredible. And David Semenison, I think it's one month. Yes, one month. Raffaella Montelli, Montelli, yes, 22 days. And Rupoki, 13 days. And sorry, Rupoki, I did not uh, did the member shout out in the last video because I recorded it before you joined. So that's why uh, I'm doing it now. Thanks a lot. And uh, again, let me know, drop me a line and I will see what I can do. Now let's jump into Ladybug and into uh, weather data alteration. I'm in Rhino 7, I'm starting up Grasshopper and we start from scratch really. I'm just trying to find the, uh, the location of this. I'll just give you a very quick background on the, on the project. Just very, very brief. It's a location, it's in Rwanda, and it's um, it's a project to help uh, women to gain ownership of land and to basically make a living. Um, some of these people are extremely poor. They had a really bad history or childhood. Um, so it's, it's a charity project. It's very interesting. It's not about um, designing something for them, but give them guidance, basically. And, and I thought, because I'm far away, um, I can maybe start to analyze space. And that's what, I, what we're going to do. Um, I have lens design. You don't need that, but it's a very cool tool where I can download maps and 3D model from the, from the internet. Rwanda is somewhere here. I have my, my Google Maps open. The location of the project is in Kikomero. And I'm not telling you more, really. It's here somewhere, and and that's that's roughly the location we want to analyze. There's quite a bit of a topography, so that might has an influence. But this is the area where we want to look at. In order to find that, we need to see where is the where is the location. Um, what's really great in lens design is that you can download the topography with the actual satellite image. Just need to find it. All 
right. I think this is a good start. Take this as our center. Create. I'm gonna ask to create a mesh, a lens design, and so on. Uh, but we also what we can see here is the latitude and the longitude. So we can use that uh, to create our new weather data. I'll just keep that here or closed. Uh, we don't need that now at the moment. Now let's go to Ladybug. Again, we need the, le the load weather data. We need uh, look for the weather data map. Then we have, we need a toggle, Boolean toggle here. That brings us to, when we turn this on, then it brings us to the weather data map. It might be, there might be the problem that, um, you know, it can always be, if they, if these are not maintained properly, then uh, it's always an issue. And we can find, we can try to find another weather data, but let's see, um, copy to clipboard. Okay. We can now put this in here. and place our, whatever we had, we had in the clipboard. So that's our location, this is the URL of the weather data. What that does, it takes the URL of that zip file of that and puts it in the default folder. We could also specify a folder and now you can see, okay, there is a problem. It seems like this is not not maintained. That's, that's not good for me. I mean, it's really bad. Uh, what could we do? We could say, okay, it's what's next closest is actually this one here. Let's see if this works. Copy clip, clip, click clipboard. That worked. So that that's the one. And we can of course uh, maybe try other ones, but this seems to be the closest. The location is somewhere here. This is the location and next to this uh, river. It's not very close to be honest, but it's somehow the closest we can get at the moment. And there are other web pages where we can get weather data. So this is my best option at the moment. It doesn't um, excite me a lot because I would have loved to get the Kigali weather data from the airport, but it seems like it's it's wrong. It doesn't work. Let's see if if this actually has some data in it because that sometimes also has an issue. So uh, ladybug input E plus weather data. Let's get this here. Yes, so it seems like it works. Yeah, there's data in there. So that's good. At least we have something to start with. So so this is one way to get the weather data. I want to show you because I think it's, this is, for me, it's really too far away. Uh, although I said, yeah, we can try to work with it. There are other repositories of weather data files. And one of this is this page here climate.onebuilding.org and you can look here for different regions in that case we are in Rwanda um, this is Eastern Africa Rwanda and it seems like this is the Kigali airport but there are others so I might actually try to find something which is close to my location so I looked at these locations. The Kigali locations are definitely the closest. That's what I will try to check. And um, best would be something which is very recent. So it seems like these, either this one or this one, I will try this. So it's the same process. process. I can actually go here and copy the link address because it links directly to the zip file. This is great. Copy link address. And let's see if we can get this to work because that would be amazing to have uh, here a working web data which is closer mm, yeah yeah it works perfect so it's a web data from 2007 to 2021 Kigali um, probably near in the city probably I'm not sure but yeah that that makes life's easy life easier because it's closer to my site we have this set up this is not our location of course so what could we do? Um, and we go from the simplest to, to the more elaborate uh, options we have. And to get a bit of better representation, let's download actually the this mesh from the with the lens lens design tool. And I want to capture all this. Let's go a bit further out. It's in, more interesting. Import. Let's see what it does. Yay! Oh, that's pretty cool can't really complain about that 
can turn this off. It's uh, it's pretty impressive what you can do with this tool. Okay, I will leave this like this. That's perfect for me. So based on our location, <laughs> if we go back to let's go back to uh, Ladybug. So I'm starting with the most the simplest way to to change uh, the the weather file. Let's get uh, another chart in here. So we have the monthly hourly plot, maybe the hourly plot. Uh, we had that before. It's quite nice and um, representative. So we can use the dry pulp temperature in here. We can um, put a base point. Maybe we just organize this in a way that it's not overlapping. Let's put the base point here. We can place a point. We can set the dimensions and if you set a set dimension then the default is zero but if we set a set dimension it's quite interesting we can we can do that by adding a slider here then we can actually create a three-dimensional chart hmm. that's not good so it has a bit of seasons july has a bit of a break here it's interesting um, it's cold and winter it's cool in winter that I didn't I thought it's gonna be more or less the same throughout minus temperatures interesting maybe it's a bit of a mistake that would be now good to compare let's compare this with another weather data um, let's go back here that would be interesting now so don't always trust everything that's very important I will test it so we have this one we're testing this one now the airport weather data copy copy link address and we go back and put this in here and see hopefully this works it's always a gamble that's an interesting weather data Ooh, this is so interesting but yeah you can see it's quite different it's quite different what's the problem here let's try another one okay let's try this one copy link address yeah this is the same as this one let's try this one copy link address interesting interesting it cools down in the afternoon this drop after the after lunch is really interesting or let's try another one here maybe they give us a better understanding of the overall okay copy link address oh it has a very similar kind of maybe it is like that Okay, so it, seem, it seems like the Giseni weather data is similar. Let's try this one. Okay, well, let's then use this. It seems like this is the most accurate. Let's assume this is correct. So this is my weather data from the Kigali International Airport. As you can see here, time zone 2, country Rwanda, source SRC TMYX. That's that's okay. We gonna ha we have something that's that's great. Uh, we we can have a a chart, a three dimensional chart. That's interesting. It's also very even throughout the year, which kind of makes sense. It seems like it becomes cooler in the afternoon, which is strange. But yeah, maybe that's how it is there. With set data, you can change uh, the height of that three dimensional chart. As you can see, for this chart, we didn't use any. We didn't use any location. It just took it just took the weather data, what what's there, and plotted it as a diagram. Now, if we want to change the location, for example, we need for let's say we have um, let's say we want to modif we want to um, check the sun hours. Um, then the location matters, and we could, for example, here go check the the sun path let's do the sun path ladybug direct sun hours with this tool here with the sun path if we want to calculate the sun hours we want to plot the sun hours on this on this geometry then we need to change the location so that's something we can do easily we can actually go here and construct a location we can take a panel and give it a name now we can check the latitude uh, this need to be now we, we need to we need to understand how how the 
what's the format of the of the location in in here so we can look at this and we can put here a panel as well minus uh, 1.97 and longitude is 3011 and we have in our case we have different location um, let's go back here that was the easiest minus 1.8 longitude 30.22 time zone is the same is 2 and the elevation is different as well so the elevation interestingly we didn't get it here but we can get it from Google Earth, at least from uh, it, it, at least roughly. Oh, Google Earth. Um, so you can actually see here in the lower right corner of the of the screen, you can see the elevation. It's one thousand eight hundred. It's pretty high actually. One thousand eight hundred. One thousand eight hundred two. Ah, uh, one thousand eight hundred eighty two. Let's say one thousand eight hundred eighty. One thousand eight hundred eighty. Now we have a new location. If we compare that, it's our new location and new elevation. It's 400 meters higher, so there's a bit of a difference. So that's that's a way to modify your weather data, uh, according depending on where where your location is, and so you can measure the sunlight correctly. Otherwise, we would we would measure it wrong because we are, let's say, 50, 60 kilometers off. The, the weather data, the original weather data. So we could, we could basically change that here. Well, what it not does is changing the actual weather data. We're just using a different location. That's a problem. That's a problem. So what we actually want to do uh, is to actually change what's in here. For that, one option, there are different ways. There's different ways and uh, people have different ways to do that. So there's one way to do to deal with that. It's it's a way. It's not it's not the perfect. It's not the best way, but it's um, it's it, it's getting us closer, of course. So or let's say there are two ways, and that actually requires Dragonfly. Or let's say Dragonfly has some components where we can alterate the weather data. So if we go into Dragonfly, there is there is this uh, box here. It says alternative weather, and there's the Dragonfly Run Urban Weather Generator. That is a tool where we can modify our weather based on a model. We don't have really a model at the moment. We only have a weather data. And we have a model, yes, but for example, in your case, you might not have a model. Then it's all a bit diff difficult. Dragonfly create E plus weather data. And then there's another one, a Dragonfly write E plus weather data. And we have the Dragonfly run urban weather generator. That is something probably later. But uh, in that case, we could use the Dragonfly create weather uh, E plus weather data. So let's try that. This is the this is our original, and this is the weather data generator. And as you can see here, we can place a different location uh, and then input other stuff here. Now, the problem is that we pretty much put the same things in here, what we have in here, but we could alt alterate that. Well, we have our location. Let's let's put this in here. This we're gonna remove. No, we let's let's keep it. But we put this here. We put the input wire displays on hidden. So it's let's put this here so it doesn't disturb us. So every time we click on it, you see that it's actually connected. Okay, we can place this here and this we place on top. And basically, what is what it does is just taking whatever comes out of here. We could build our own weather data. That's that's the cool thing. So we, if we have our own data, we can place it in here and we can specify the location. In that case, yes, the location. Now the dry time, we, we can use this temperature as a first, as a start, let's say. Uh, it won't be exact because the temperature changes with the elevation. But let's, what else do we have? Wind speed, uh, wind direction, Direct normal radiation, diffuse horizontal radiation, horizontal infrared, direct normal illumination, diffuse horizontal illumination, total sky cover, barometric pressure, model year, and ground temperature. So some things are not in here, but we can then place the, the base E plus weather data, which is the original one. And with this, we could create our new weather data. It's not going to be perf perfect because again it's higher the altitude is higher 
Now I'm, I'm showing you how you can alterate data as well. We could uh, now, if we have information about it, about the temperature, we could, for example, now change the temperature and plug it in here. I know from university that the temperature changes per every 100 meters in elevation. The temperature changes with the air pressure. So we could um, probably need to change the pressure and the temperature. So this is all just me trying to think logic on what we could do in order to get to a more accurate weather data for our specific location. I'm not saying that it's absolutely correct. The best way is to go there and put a weather station. I'm just trying to think logic and what could we change. Of course, there is other things. Wind speed. This is on a hill and it might the wind might be very, very different. Although the airport is flat, it might be similar. It could be similar. Nevertheless, uh, I will show you how you can change the data. So if we go here in Ladybug, there's an option here, Ladybug deconstruct data. And we could put here the dry pulp temperature and this gives us values in the header. And we could go here now and say, subtract the values minus, and we are, the original location is 1,481 and our new location is 1,880. So let's say it's around 400 meters. What I, what I can remember from university was that per 100 meters elevation, the temperature drops by one degree Celsius. Let's check that if that is correct. So you could see here, one degree Celsius per 100 meters. So that's what we're going to use. So we subtract by four. We subtract four of each value. And that gives us a list with minus four. It's probably a, a bit more representative. Now we have values here. If I can, if I put values here, it might work. It might not be a problem, but to be, to be uh, correct or to, to make it proper, we can construct data and we just um, need the values and put the header back. And that allows us to change the values and put it back into a, a form which we had before. So if you look at this, one lo locally defined values, hourly continuous data collection, blah, 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 blah. And this is the same here because we have the same header, same va the, and the alternated values. So that we can put in here. We might also want to change, do the same with the dew point temperature. And of course, wind speed would be good too. So it's, it's, you can start with the location as a start, change it. And then you need to think, what do we need to change? What else do we need to change to get to a better, to a more and more closer weather data? I could, I could think of the barometric pressure changes quite a lot. So we could, um, Go here again and see how would that change. Wait, let's check the dew point temperature. I didn't find really a reliable source for the for the degrees of the dew point temperature. Uh, Jet GPT told me said told me this: the dew point temperature decreases by approximately one degree one uh, degree Celsius per one hundred meters of elevation gain in a most adiabatic lapse rate, which is the rate at which a parcel of saturated air rises and cools. This rate can vary depending on atmospheric conditions, but as a general rule, the dew point temperature decreases by about one degree Celsius for every 100 meters increase in elevation. Well, let's ask the same for barometric pressure. How much does the barometric pressure decreases per 100 meter elevation change. And here's the answer. The parametric pressure decreases by an average of one hectopascal per 8.5 meters of elevation gain, or about 12 hectopascal per 100 meters of elevation gain. This rate of decrease is known as the normal or standard atmospheric pressure lapse rate. However, it is important to note that this is just an average rate and actual pressure changes with elevation can vary depending on local atmospheric conditions. Well, that's the best I have. <laughs> Um, let's let's use this, uh, and that's what we change. So we we have we have some idea. 
wind speed might change quite a lot that we, I don't have really um, an answer at the moment, but the and the total sky cover might be similar as well. Barometric pressure changes and the dew point temperature. Dew point temperature is at one degree, so we can use the same formula. Just copy this, reduce that here as well, and the barometric pressure. And here, of course, we need to check what's what are the values. The values here are Pascal. That means twelve. That means um, 12 times 4 is 48. So this is the Pascal I need to reduce per per value entry. Put this here as a maximum. It's not a good idea. But you can see now we reduced it and there's the new data and that we can use here. Atmospheric pressure. And now we can run this. Boolean toggle. Put this in here. We also want to have this one, the right uh, Dragonfly weather, E plus weather uh, file. We can choose a folder now. Let's do this. So we have Rhino 7, Ladybug, E plus weather file. You can place this in here. This is now our new folder of the new E plus weather file, of the new weather file. And the file name is Gikomero. And we can also put a toggle here. Okay, let's run this. Um, yeah, we have a new file, new weather file. Pretty interesting. So we have a new weather file. We created our new weather file out of the old data with our new location. And now we can compare. Let's let's compare the stuff. So for that, we choose just a simple um let's let's go here let's choose the hourly plot again and we can put here the data and a new a new point here base point oh actually we don't need that because we had that already nevertheless let's use this for our new data so this is the old one this is the new one oh yeah we need to we need to get uh, this tool here now we don't need to Put, we don't need this um, import data anymore because we just uh, put the the location of the file here. It just gives us the location where it is. That's enough. And we just put in here the data. And oh, now we can compare that. I mean, we haven't done much with it here really, but and you will not see much difference. Right. I will just take this point here and move it closer. Oops. But you can see that the temperature changed quite a lot. It's cooler, it's slightly cooler overall. We could um, get a maximum and a minimum. So we can actually control that by using, no, where is it? Legend parameters here. Use the same legend parameters, which where we, dis where we basically set the minimum and the maximum. We could set the minimum here with zero degree and a maximum with, let's say, 40. And we can use that for both. That means the parameters are set the same, with the same minimum and maximum. Now, when we look at it, it's quite different. Uh, we can uh, also go here and check. Maybe we need to go lower. We can see a bit more. Maybe, maybe 35. No, that was too much. I think originally it was 32 or something like that. And now we have two weather data next to each other. So I think this is pretty cool. And we're still in here. I mean, we have touched a bit on this. Ladybug deconstruct data and Ladybug construct data. There's also a way to construct your own header. And there's a way to construct your own data type. And the other things we'll look at next time. But this gives us a quite interesting starting point. If we don't find the weather data on the site we're working on. Oh! <laughs> one more thing. I want to explain one more thing. So this was one way to do it. Of course, you can tinker with the file itself. That might be something. That's This is one way I like to work. This is also good because you can then change stuff very easily and quickly and names and, and, and so on. And you can test different, different ways. You can then maybe add uh, things where you think you have new data. For example, the wind speed. Um, there is another tool here in the Dragonfly section. It's called the Run Urban Weather Generator. And this 
is a, a, let's say a more elaborate version of what we're doing here it's taking a weather data and then tries to um, calculate the heat island effect or let's say it calculates the new weather a new weather data based on a model with buildings and so on we could do that as well in our in our model here with this model that would be an option but uh, but yeah step by step and we might do that at some point uh, you can check out the video i did for this uh, it's i did a video already to show how that might work all right i hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next soon